Okay, hello class. In this video, we're gonna do the unit five review. So notice that um, it doesn't give me the same versions of the, or uh, the same algorithmically generated numbers as the problem. So every time you see a problem with font that's in red, it's because those numbers are going to be algorithmically generated, okay? So they change. And if you notice on my number one, I received the numbers one half versus in here, the numbers are two fifths, okay? Um, so the, the problems are the same. It's just, I have different numbers for the problems that I did when I took the review myself, okay? But I wanted to show you what was in the problem so that when you're going through the review, you understand the directions and you know what they're looking for. Okay, so for example, number one, they says use the, it says use a graphing utility to construct the table of values for the function. Now we are not allowed to use graphing utilities, which are basically graphing calculators. Um, so we're gonna do this with our scientific calculator. So in order for me to fill in this table, essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking this function and then I'm plugging in each of these values for X so that I can find the corresponding Y values or f of x values. So when you're doing that in your calculator, for my problem, one half, I'm gonna say fraction one over two, oops, and then raise to the power, um, and for the first x value, I'm gonna use negative two. And so then it does pop out, um, oh, it's a negative x value. So it should have been this, and then I'm plugging in. Where my little cursor go? Oh. And then I'm plugging in a negative to four x. So there's a negative there from the function, um, and then the negative two that I'm plugging in. So it actually turn it to positive, and so then you do get that result one fourth. Same thing for the other problem, but this time I'm plugging in the X value negative one. And so I get one half. Then you do it again, but you're plugging in this time, no negative and the number zero. And you do get this. And then you can do it again, copy, change the one, the zero to a one, you get the two and so on and so forth. I really don't need to do the last one. Um, but you get the idea. You're just plugging it into this function. Just remember that each one of these x values replaces only the x. So you will still have this negative on the outside, okay? Um, you could have also rewritten it knowing that a fraction means the reciprocal of two, and the reciprocal of two is denoted by an exponent of negative one, right? We had a rule before that said if you had this, it was a to the negative one. Um, and then when we have exponents raised to exponents, like this, we just multiply those exponents together, okay? And so a negative one times a negative X is a positive X. And so if I were to plug each of these X values into this function without the negative or the fraction, you do still end up with the same exact values. For instance, two raised to the negative two, oops, two raised to the negative two, you do get that one fourth as the first response. Okay, because these two things are equivalent to each other. Now, if I plot all these points, you've got negative two and one fourth, you've got negative one and one half, you've got zero and one, one and two, and then two and four. If you connect all the dots, it does create this image here, which will match um, essentially the same type of image. So it should be this graph right there. Okay. Um, Again, this assignment it's saying is past due. Um, I don't know why it's saying that, but anyway. Okay, so then now for number two, it shouldn't say it's past due. So I actually have to go in there and change the due dates, which I will do as soon as I finish this video. So um, if I go in here and I do the same thing again, notice that the numbers in red have changed on my problem. Here it's a three and a five, but essentially it's the same problem. You're gonna fill in your chart. 
So I literally did, I actually used the storing capability in my calculator for this one, because this is a little bit more complicated. So I went ahead and I did negative two stores X and then hit enter. And then I typed in the whole function. So three to the power X plus one, get down from there and hit plus five. Now, when I hit enter, it's gonna plug in negative two for X. And so then I get 16 over three, which if I hit the decimal, the convert from fraction to decimal, if I can hit that button, it gave me this 5.3 so that I would know where to graph it, okay? Then if I do negative one stores X, go back up to that expression and copy it and then press enter to plug in the negative one and so on and so forth. I'll do the last one just so you can see. And I get the 32, okay? Um, and so then I just plotted each of those points. I went over negative two and up 5.3, negative one and up six, zero and went up eight, one and went up 14, and then two went up to 32. And I made these markers by five. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, okay? Um, so that's essentially how we did um, this particular problem. And so that's the graph there. Now for number three, again, the numbers in red have changed. So over here I had two and four. Um, and so then I can rewrite this much like I rewrote number one. I can say one over two is the same as two to the negative one power. And then I can multiply these exponents together, which gives me a negative X exponent. I could also rewrite four as two squared, which means I can use the one-to-one -one property says that if the bases are already the same, then this needs to equal that. And so that's what this statement is. And I can solve this statement for X by dividing both sides by negative one. And so then we get the X value would be negative two, okay? And we already know that if we plug in um, a negative two up here, so if I plugged in two, it would be negative two exponent um, I do get four. And that's what this is saying, is if you have one half or yeah, one half to the negative two exponent, you should get four. And we do. So number four, again, the stuff in red, right? This stuff in red is different than my numbers, okay? But, or these two really are the only difference. You can apply the one-to-one -one function because you do already have the same bases. So if the bases are same, then these exponents should be the same. And so if you set them equal to one another, you can solve for X to figure out what value that is that would make it true. So then I added six over and I got four X equal to 14. I divided both sides by four and reduced and I got seven halves. Um, for number five, it just wants us to write it in exponential form. So remember when you're writing this expression, it's going to be the base is still the base of the exponential. And then remember a logarithm equals an exponent. So this should be your exponent. And then your argument gets kicked over to the other side. Okay, so a six squared equals 36. And that is a true statement there. Now here they want us to do it in the reverse. They want us to take this exponential expression and put it in logarithmic form. So same thing here, again, different numbers, but we're gonna put it in log form. So it's gonna be log with the same base as the exponential base, so base 32. And then this is on the other side, so that's our argument, and our exponent should always be on the other side of the log because a logarithm equals an exponent. Um, and so that's that one. Now for number seven, eight, and nine, um, we have these values. So whenever your bases match here, they do eventually just cancel each other out, which leaves you just the five. And here, um, you could do the change of base formula, but if you do the change of base formula and you type this in your calculator, it does tell you that the answer is zero, okay? Also, there's a rule that says log with any base of one is equal to zero, okay? Now here, same thing, you have a base of an exponential and the base of a log, we already know that those cancel each other out. So you would end up with just the 13 as your final answer. So now problems 10 and 11. 
So for 10, you do have one log and equal to another log and they both have the same base. So the only way for them to be equivalent is if this argument equals that argument. And so we set the arguments equal to zero and then a minus one on both sides to get the value of X equal to two. For number 11, um, this one wanted to know the domain. So they wanted me to know the domain, the x-intercept, the vertical asymptote, and then ultimately the graph. So the domain is basically where your argument must be zero, greater than zero. Your argument must be positive, okay? So in this case, my argument was just x. So x had to be greater than zero. There's no solving of this necessary. So you just put that in the interval. And if it's everything greater than zero, it would be from zero to infinity. And since there's no bar here, this should be a parentheses around zero. For the x-intercept, the x-intercept happens when the whole function equals zero, right? So what I did was I changed the forms over so I could solve for x. You can never solve for x or any variable if that variable is in the argument or if that variable is in the exponent. If your variable is in the argument or the exponent, you are gonna have to switch the forms over. If it was a logarithmic equation, you're gonna have to switch it to an exponential equation. If you had an, a variable in the exponent, you need to switch it over to the log um, form so that you could get that exponent down from there. So this one happened to have logs. So we're gonna change it to an exponential. So it'd be this base and a logarithm equals an exponent. So it'd be this base with this exponent and the argument would get kicked over to the other side. Now six to the power zero is just one. So really that expression is just saying X equals one. Um, and so then this is a point, this is your X intercept and this is the X value you just found and the Y value from setting the whole function equal to zero, you were finding that Y that when Y was zero. You made Y zero and then you were finding the X that would make that happen, okay? Now for the vertical asymptote, you just set your argument equal to zero. So in this case, my argument was X. So I just set X equal to zero. No solving was necessary. That was my, whole, my vertical asymptote. And so my vertical asymptote, where did my pins go? There they are. My vertical asymptote is here at X equals zero. You just can't see it but because it's on top of the y-axis, but there is a vertical asymptote there, okay? And then I graphed my x-intercept right here. And then I went ahead and just found another point. So I plugged in four into there. And in order for me to plug four into that function, I had to do the change of base formula. And then when I did type this in the calculator, I got the value 0 0.8. So I got another point four and 0 0.8, which was enough to draw the image. Since this is an asymptote, it does have to go downward closer to this green asymptote, but not quite touching it, okay? Um, now, number 12 was to write it in exponential form. So when I have this expression, I have to remember that ln means log base e. So instead of writing ln of one-fifth, I'm writing log base e of one-fifth, still equal to the same value that was there before, okay? Um, and then if I wanna switch this to an exponential, exponential form, e is the base of the logarithm, so e will be the base of my exponential. A logarithmic equals an exponent, so I know that this will be the new exponent. And then I have no other place but to kick the argument over to the other side, okay? Um, so similarly, for number 13, again, the values change, but I do have an, an equation like this. And here E is the base. So I said log base E, and then your exponent will actually go on the other side because we know a logarithm equals an exponent, right? So that leaves no choice but for this number to become my argument. So we have log base E of 148 point something equal to five. And then this, we know log base E just means LN. So this is the same thing as saying LN of 148.4131 equals five. Okay, now number 14, we have this expression. So this is a reciprocal. So we can rewrite it, but when we put this up top, it becomes a negative exponent. 
And then we also know that LN means log base E. And we also know that when these bases match, that they cancel each other out. And so that's why the response, the final answer here is just negative five. Now for number 15, it is a one-to-one -one since both of these are LN and both of them um, are alone. We can just say, well, this argument has to equal that argument. And then if I solve for X, I get this. And so then I get X equals plus seven or X equals negative seven. And I did write them both out here, but when I checked each one, they both worked. So that's why I boxed both solutions. Sometimes it can happen where only one solution works or both solutions are bad. Um, if only one solution works, then you only type in that one answer. But if none of them work, then you just type in no solution. Now, number 16, they wanted me to use the change of base formula to write it as common logs and as natural logs. So we always know that we're gonna take the log of the top is gonna to be the argument. And then the bottom is going to be the base. I think B, B, right? B for bottom, B for base. So the base will always go at the bottom. The argument will go at the top, okay? So it's log common base is 10. So log invisible base 10 of X, log invisible base 10 of 5.9. And the same thing with the natural log. So you're gonna take the natural log of X over the natural log of the old base 5.9. Um, and I just wanted you to write those expressions so you didn't have to evaluate it or anything like that, okay? Now number 17 says to use the properties to expand the expression, okay? So the first thing you wanna do is break up the product. And I do have um, three things that are being multiplied together in that argument. So when I separate it, all of them are gonna have log base four. So log base four of 11, log base four of B8, and log base four of C. And because they're all multiplied, there are plus signs in between each one. If it were division, anybody that came from the bottom would be a negative, okay? Now this is almost okay. I just cannot have any exponents when you're expanding, okay? So this exponent will come to the front of its corresponding log. So this becomes eight log four base or log four of B, okay? The other two terms stayed exactly the same and this is the final expansion step. So for number 18, we had this problem and it wanted us to expand it, okay? So the first thing I did was rewrite this radical as a one half exponent then I did go ahead and split up the fraction. So I did ln of the top minus ln of the bottom. And then this exponent can actually go in the front here. So it'll be ln of five minus one half ln of x squared plus two. Now you can't break this up anymore because there's no rule when your argument has a plus sign. You could have a plus sign between two logs and then it will turn into the log of a product. But you cannot break up when your argument itself has a plus sign, okay? So this I cannot break up. There's no rule that allows me to break that up. Now here we wanna condense it. So you basically want it all one log, okay? And no coefficient in front of those logs. So the first thing I did was bring up my exponent. So this coefficient went up here to the y and this uh, coefficient went up as an exponent on z. So it became this. I still have the minus in between the first two terms and a plus between the second two terms or the last two terms. Then because I put these two together first, so it has x minus the y fourth, which means I actually do, when it's log x minus log y to the fourth, it's actually one log with this in the numerator and then what's behind the minus would be in the denominator. But now I still have to add this log. And so we know that when you add, it's multiplication. So then I would have this argument times this argument. And so then that ends up looking like just log, one log only, x, z to the seventh on top, and y to the fourth at the bottom. Again, they change the numbers on you, but it's essentially the same idea. Now for 20. So for 20 is this one, same thing. You want to get down to one log, and you don't want any coefficients. So the first thing I did was pull up the seven, the one third and the three. 
Once I had the seven, the one third and the three in the right spot, I did put these two together. And since it was a plus sign, I put a minus in between these two things. And notice I also changed the one third exponent into the cube root because radical, because that's what it means, okay? Then I still have this term here. And if I put those two together, remember the ones with the minus, that argument will go at the bottom. So it's log seven, and then I'll have a fraction bar with the Z3 at the bottom and this argument up at the top, okay? And that is it for number 20. For 21, we're solving equations. So if there's every single term has a log, you would use the one-to-one -one property, but you may need to manipulate it first. If it's all exponentials, every single term is an exponential um, term, then you can write them as one exponential and one exponential, and then use the one-to-one the -one property. Um, if not all of your terms are logarithms, like this one, this is not a logarithm, then you have to eventually change the form from a log to an exponential and then hope to solve it that way. If you have a but if you have exponentials, but not every term in your equation is an exponential, there's maybe one guy that's not an exponential. It's just the number five, for instance. Um, then you would have to convert that uh, equation into a logarithmic equation and hopefully you could solve it from there. Okay. So for us, not every term was a logarithmic equate of uh, expression. Okay. This term is not a logarithmic expression. So what I did do is I did try to combine these so that I would have one log equal to that number. And I did, I ended up with log of X over 16. Then once it's like this, I had to remember that log with no base provided is a base 10, okay? And if I wanna change a log base 10 into an exponential, that base would still be the base of the exponential. A logarithm is equal to the exponent, so the exponent would be zero. And then the x over 16 has no choice but to be kicked over to the other side, okay? And then this becomes my expression. Remember our discussion before, 10 or anything to the power zero is actually the value one. And so then if I multiply both sides by 16, this would cancel and I would get 16 equal to x. And so then my I did double check that my argument would be okay. And since my argument is positive when I plug in 16, I'm good to go. This, this answer will work, okay? Now 22, same thing. Um, it's just, I didn't have basically a pre-step like that one. It already has one log equal to a non-log, right? Just a regular number. So we did swap the forms over this base and this exponent, so four fifths, and then the argument on the other side, and then four fifths in the calculator was 1024. So X is 1024. And if I were to plug that into the original, the argument would be positive. So this answer is A-OK. -okay. Now number 23, again, they change the numbers on us, but it's a very similar equation. This is an exponential equation, but not every term is an exponential. This term right here, 20, is not an exponential. So what we do is, is we get the exponential piece alone or by itself first by dividing both sides by four. Now the exponential expression is all by itself and you still have just a number over here. You can change the form into a logarithmic form. So this becomes log base B, log base B, and then, um, of five, and then this should be your exponent. And remember, a logarithm equals exponent. So that X will come all the way over here to the other side. Now this is just numbers. So I should be able to type this in my calculator. My calculator just doesn't do it when it's base six. So I did have to use the change of base formula so that I could plug it in my calculator. So I did um, LN of five over LN of six. And then when I typed it in the calculator, it came up with the response 0 0.898. And so that was um, the answer there. Number 25 is very similar, um, or I'm sorry, 24. You've got an exponential expression equal to a non-exponential expression. So you get the exponential expression alone first by dividing both sides by five. And then once you have the exponential piece by itself, you can switch the forms over. So this becomes log with base E 
um, of the 14.2 equal to the old exponent, okay? And then remember log base E just means LN. So literally this is LN of 14.2, which can be typed in your calculator and it pops out 2.653, okay? Now 25 was a little bit special because I realized that it wasn't one in the homework. There wasn't one in the lecture videos, but for some reason they have one here in the review. So I definitely wanted to talk about it because it is very, very interesting. Um, you can solve this problem two ways, okay? I might do it the other way on a little sticky sheet, but essentially the idea is, is that you want to um, get those X's out of the exponents. You cannot solve equations when your variables are in the exponents, okay? The only way to get them down is the logarithmic property. There's a logarithmic property that says if you have an exponent of your argument, you can pull it down and just write it in front of the logarithm, right? And then it would no longer be in the exponent. But I have to have a logarithm in order to do that. So what I want to do is I want to take the log on both sides. Now, which base you use is completely up to you. You could use any base you want. You could use base 5 million if you really, really wanted to, okay? For convenience, I would rather you choose to stick with one of the bases you've been given. So I have a base eight and I have a base nine in this particular problem. If I choose to do log base eight of both sides, that means I'm applying the log base eight to this side and I'm applying the log base eight to this side. Now what that does over here is you have base and a base matches, these cancel and I just have X all by itself. Over here, this exponent will come to the front, giving you X squared times log base eight of nine, okay? Um, now notice that over here, I did not choose to take the log base eight on both sides. I chose to take log base nine on both sides. It was just a choice. I had to choose between eight and nine. And it so happened that when I was doing it the first time, I chose nine. I just wanted you to see that you could also do it choosing eight as your base and it will work out the same. I'll continue with this after I talk about this one, okay? So we bring down this exponent, right? Because these bases are not the same, so they won't cancel each other out. So I'm still stuck with this expression, but with the X in the front. Here, the bases are the same, so they do cancel each other out, log and all, and I end up with just the x squared. So remember, this you cannot type in your calculator. So I just rewrote it using the change of base for me, formula, ln of the argument over ln of the base. And then I notice, uh-oh, I have x squared. So I need to move this whole term over to the other side. In order to do that, since it's positive, I would have to subtract it. So that's why I ended up with zero on the left-hand side equal to x squared minus ln of eight over ln of nine x. This is some kind of decimal. I don't know what it is, but it's just x squared minus a decimal times x. Well, I can factor that. I can factor an x out. And if I factor an x out, I would be left with the extra x here, and then I would be left with just this fraction over here. If I set this factor equal to zero, I get zero equal to x. If I set this factor equal to zero, I have zero equal to x minus ln of eight over ln of nine. Then I'm gonna add ln of eight over ln of nine to both sides, which gives me ln of eight over ln of nine equal to x. I type that in the calculator and I figure out that x was about 0 0.946. Okay. Now 26 we have seen in the um, assignments, the web assign assignments. So this one has e to the 2x minus e to the x plus 6. And if you recall, if this exponent happens to double, then it's a quadratic type. And since I do have that situation happening here, I am going to let u equal the middle expression without the coefficient, OK? Then if I were to square both sides of that equation, um, you would multiply these exponents. So I would get e to the 2x. So the u, this e to the 2x, right, will become u squared minus 5, and the e to the x will become u, and then your plus 6 equal to 0. You can do quadratic formula to solve this. You will get the same two answers if you do quadratic formula. 
I just didn't do quadratic formula. So I went ahead and I did u minus three equal to zero and then u minus two equal to zero. So I got u equal to three, u equal to two, back sub what u represents. u represents e to the x. So it's actually e to the x that equals three and e to the x that equals three. And I did convert both of those into their log forms because your variable's in the exponent. So I did log base v of this guy equal to my exponent, which just means ln of three equal to x. Um, and then that means this decimal is about what x is. Same thing here, I would have log base e of two equal to the exponent x. This is the same thing as ln of two and ln of two is about 0 0.693, okay? Now, there were no arguments here in logs, so I didn't have to check these answers, but if you did, they would check out both of them. And so you would type both of them. Now, I did forget to show you on number 25 that if I had done it the other way, I would have gotten the same answer. So for number 25, if I would have done log base eight, instead, I would have ended up with this. I still have this x squared, so I would still have the minus x on both sides. And I'm gonna do my change of base. So ln of the argument over ln of the base minus x, I would factor out an x. And I'd get just minus one. So if I set this one equal to zero, I'd get that. If I set this one equal to zero, I would have to add one. And then I would have to multiply by the reciprocal of this. So if I multiplied by the reciprocal, it would cancel the nine and cancel the ln eight. And over here, I just end up with ln of eight over ln of nine. And if you notice, that's exactly what we had over here, ln of eight over ln of nine, okay? So regardless of which base you used when you applied that initial logarithm on both sides, one of them is gonna cancel and the other is gonna kind of get drug along and eventually you have to do the change of base. Um, and which one you do doesn't matter because you do get the same exact answer, okay, regardless. Okay, number 27. So for number 27, we have this problem here. So this is a common log, which means there's no number there. So it's automatically a 10. And if I change this to an exponential, I have 10 with the exponent of three equal to the argument 2z. Um, this is essentially, if I divide both sides by two, 10 cubed is actually a thousand. And if I divide a thousand by two, I end up with um, 500. And if I plug 500 into the original, the argument is positive, so it's perfectly acceptable as a solution. Now for 28, I do have to isolate this ln of x before I can switch it to an exponential, okay? And anytime your variable is inside your argument, you do wanna switch it to an exponential. So I did subtract two at first, then I divided by negative two, and then I changed ln into log base e, and then I changed the form over. So e is the base, this becomes the exponent, and the argument gets kicked to the other side. And this I can stick in my calculator, and all I get is 0 0.082. For number 29, um, again, not every single log is, um, not every single term is a log. This one is not a log. So I just need to combine these into one. Since there's a subtraction, it's gonna be this argument on the top of the fraction and this argument at the bottom of the fraction. But ln does mean log base e. So when I switch it to its exponential form, it's gonna be that base e with this exponent equal to the argument there. Then I have to multiply both sides by the common denominator. So if I multiply that here, x plus one, it's just gonna cancel and I'm gonna have x all by itself. But if I multiply over here, x plus one, you actually need to distribute it, okay? So that would be e squared times x plus e squared equal to x. And then you have x's on this side and x's on that side. 
So the goal is really to get the x's all together and the constants all together. Now, as weird as this looks, it is just a constant. It's a number. I don't know what number, whatever it is you get when you square 2.718, but it's a number. So I'm gonna minus this x on both sides and I'm gonna minus this e squared on both sides. And so what happens is, is I get e squared times x minus x. And over here, these are gone. So I just end up with the negative e squared. Then I noticed that both of these have x, so I factored out the x and I got e squared minus one. Then if I'm trying to solve for x, I need to divide both sides by e squared minus one. And so I ended up with this. And it turns out that they did want this. They did not want me to um, round my answer. It says I could have, um, oh, I could have round my answer, which is why I did go ahead and put it in the calculator and get a decimal. However, this decimal did not check out. Why does it not check out? Because as soon as I plug it into either one of these arguments, the arguments are not positive anymore, okay? It does cause the arguments to go negative. When the arguments are not positive, when they're either zero or negative, when those arguments are no longer positive, you do not have a solution. That solution does not work at all, okay? And so in this case, the answer is no solution has nothing to do with the fact that this number itself is negative, and it has everything to do with the fact that once I plug it into the arguments, it stays negative. Now, 30. 30 does have every single term with a log. So you have natural log, natural log, natural log. So we wanna apply the one-to-one -one property but you can only apply the one-to-one -one property if you have one log on one side and one log on the other. So these two, we had to combine together. And so it's gonna be the first argument, and since it's a minus, over the second argument, okay? If it were a plus, I'd be multiplying them together. But since it's a minus, the one following the minus goes at the bottom. Now, here, I can use the one-to-one -one property. So if the LNs are the same, then this argument has to equal that argument. I did multiply both sides by X minus three, X minus three. Here they cancel, leaving me with just X plus three. And over here, I'd eventually have to distribute. So I get X plus three on the left and then X squared minus three X on the right. I do have an X squared. So I did move both of these terms over to the other side. And I got zero equal x squared minus 4x minus 3. I did apply my quadratic formula. Um, and I ended up with actually these two values. Okay, so I did 2 plus square root of 7, and I got this number. And then I did 2 minus the square root of 7, and I got this number. Now notice that this one, when I plug it right in there, or right in here, either one of those, it will make those arguments negative, which is not good news. So this answer does not check out. But when I plug in 4.6 here, it'll be positive. Here, it'll turn into 1.6, but it'll still be positive. And here it would turn into 7.6, which is also positive. So it doesn't, it does check out in all those arguments, whereas the negative value did not check out. Now, Excuse me, I don't know why I keep yawning, but anyway, I'm still sleepy. <laughs> so here again, it changed the values, but we're gonna solve it. It is an exponential equation, but not every term is an exponential. This 22 right here is not an exponential. So I will have to change it to a logarithm. But before I can do that, I have to have this base exponent by itself. So I've got to get rid of that five first. So I divided both sides by five and ended up with E with that exponent equal to 4.4. I did go ahead and change it into a log base E of 4.4 equal to the exponent. Then we know log base E is LN. We know that in order to solve for X, we're gonna have the minus seven on both sides. So I have LN of 4.4 minus seven. And then if I'm trying to still solve for X, I would have to divide by its coefficient, which was a negative one. So when I divide both sides by negative one, I typed this entire thing in my calculator exactly the way it was. And we should get 5.58. So I typed in a fraction bar, then the LN of 4.4, close my parentheses, minus seven 
over negative one. And I get that 5.58, okay? So number 32. Number 32 is this problem here. So it says, mine said 2000 was invested in an account at an interest rate of mine said 0 0.045 compounded continuously. So the fact that it said it was compounded continuously told me to use this formula, okay? And then I just plugged in the numbers I was given. And the information that I was given for part A was find the time required for the amount to double. So that means that this amount would be double what I put in. So I did two times that 2,000. I could have also just put 4,000, but I didn't. I said two times the 2,000. And so then this is an exponential equation. So I do have to get rid of this 2,000 before I can switch it to a log. So I divided both sides by 2,000. That would cause those to cancel and these to cancel. So I end up with just the two equal to e to the 0.045t. Then I change it over. So it's log with this base e of two equal to the exponent. And this is the same thing as saying ln of two. And if I'm trying to solve the equation ln of two equal to this decimal, I have to divide both sides by that decimal so that I could get t all by itself. And when I type this in the calculator, it did pop out 15.40, okay? Now for the second part, part B, it says find the required time to triple. So that means my amount afterward is gonna be three times what I put in. So again, I'm gonna divide both sides by 2000 so that I can get my exponential piece by itself. So these cancel, these cancel and actually get three equal to the exponential equation or exponential uh, expression. And so now I'm gonna change it to log. So it's gonna be log base, this base E of the three equal to the exponent. Then this is nothing more than just saying ln of three. And I can divide both sides by 0 0.045 so that I can solve for T. And when I type this whole thing in my calculator, it does give me 24.41. And so that is the time that it would be required to triple. Okay, again, different numbers because I had different numbers. Okay, number 33. So again, the red numbers do change. I've written down mine. Um, the point is, is that you're going to want to recognize that you can factor a common factor here. So I do notice that both of them have a nine. Both of them have an X. They both don't have X squared, but they do both at least have X, okay? And then they both have an E to the two X. So if I took the e to the 2x, I took an x, and I took the 9 out, all I have left is just the x. And this thing times x would give me that first term. Now for the second term, I took out the 9, I took out the 1, I took out the e to the 2x. So everything's gone. But honestly, what times this would be the same thing? That only happens with the number 1. 1 times anything will be the same exact thing. Okay, so you do have to have two terms in this parentheses because you did have two terms to begin with. So whatever you factored out must distribute so that you end up with what you had to begin with. Okay, once I do have that factored out, each expression that has, each factor that has an X is going to get set equal to zero. So I noticed that this expression had an X, so nine X equals zero. This factor had an X, so that factor needs to equal zero. And then finally, this factor has an X in it, and so that factor needs to be equal to zero. So when I solve this one, I just minus one and I get X equals negative one. When I change this over to its log form, I get log base E of zero, or just ln of zero, and then I would divide both sides by two. But when you try to, try to type ln of zero over two in your calculator, it pops out undefined which basically means you do not get any solutions from this side, from that factor, okay? And here, if you have nine X equal to zero, you just divide both sides by nine and you get X equal to zero. Now there were no logarithms in the original problem, so I don't technically need to check my answer, 
but you could if you wanted to, and both answers are correct. Now for 34, they do give you the formula. They do give you the bounds on the side, okay? And they even give you a, a number here. So it says the population P in thousands of Alaska in the years 2005 to 2015 can be modeled by this function, where T represents the year with T equal to five corresponding to 2005. During which year did the population of Alaska exceed 70, uh, 710,000? So remember P is in thousands. So we're just gonna be typing in the 710. Then I did go ahead and subtract the five four. So I got 170 equal to this. Remember, you need your log part alone. So I divided both sides by 75, and I got this fraction reduced. When I typed this in, it just reduced it for me, 34 over 15. And then now I should be able to switch the form. So remember, this LN is log base E. So when I switch it to exponential, it's going to be base E with this exponent equal to this argument. And so it's exactly what we've done here. And then that you can type in a calculator and it, excuse me, and it pops out 9.6, okay? So remember if 2005 corresponds to T equal to five, it kind of looks like you're just taking 2000 plus your T value, okay? So I took 2000 plus 9.6 and I got 2009.6. All the 0.6 means is that you've probably gone about two thirds into the year, but it's not the next year yet. So it is still in the year 2009. Okay, number 35 has these little charts here. It says find the missing value. It does say continuously compounded. So I am using this formula here. They gave me the initial investment. So P is 1000 and they give me my rate. Again, it's a different rate than yours and a different P than yours, but originally it was 7.5%. And so then I moved the decimal over two places and I got this as the decimal representation. I plugged everybody in the A, the 1000 I was given, the E and the rate that I was given times T. So now I used this as my basis to do parts A and B. So for the first one, time to double, that meant that my investment should double. So if this, my investment was a thousand bucks, then when I double it, it should be 2000. Now I cannot solve this equation because the variable's in the exponent. When the variable's in the exponent, you must switch it to a logarithm. So the first thing I gotta do is get rid of that coefficient 1000. So I divided both sides by 1,000, and this resulted in 2 equal to e to the 0 0.075 t. From here, I did change it into a logarithm expression. So log base e of 2 equal to the exponent. And then log base e is just ln. And then I divided both sides by 0 0.075. So I typed this whole thing in the calculator, and it does pop out 9.24. Now for the other one, it says find the amount after 10 years. So I'm just plugging in 10 for the years. So I took the same formula and just plugged in 10 for the time. And I typed the whole thing in my calculator and it told me it was 2117.00. Excuse me. Now number 36 says find the missing values. So again, they were given P, again, my numbers are different, but P equals 200 and the amount after 10 years, this is T, was 1205, this is dollars, okay? And I'm still using compounded continuously. So I'm still using that same PERT formula. So I'm gonna go with this information, okay? And I put it together. So if I want to know the amount, that's going to be 1205 equal to the P, which was given me 2000, E to the R, which I was never given, times T. And I know that this amount only applies when T is equal to 10. So I plug in the 10 for T. Now, this is an exponential with your variable in the exponent. So I need to get it in the log form. 
So I got rid of the 200, that came out to 6.025 equal e to the 10 r, switched over to its log form, log base e of 6.025 equal to the exponent. Then this is just log e is the same as ln. So it's ln of 6.025 equal to 10 r, divide both sides by 10 so you could get r all by itself. And if you type all of that in the calculator, you do get this decimal. Now it's a rate and it looks like they want percentage, okay? So I've got to convert this to percent. So to do that, you're gonna move it over twice, okay? And so then you actually get 17.96 because they do want you to round it at least two places after the decimal. Now, once you have that, um, you have that rate, you should be able to figure out the time to double. So we know that in order for you to double, the amount is gonna be two times the amount you put in, and the amount I put in was 200, and then e to this rate in its decimal form, right? We always need to use the decimal form in the formula. So we got rid of the 200, and we got two equal to e to the point 1796t. Change the form over to a logarithmic, so log e of two equal to the exponent. Um, that's ln of two equal to the exponent. Then I divided both sides by the coefficient of t. And so I got this value is about the t value. Okay, here they'll just cancel. Um, and so that is how we do number 36. Number 37 says determine the principal p that must be invested at a rate of, mine was 8%. So I moved it over and I got 0 0.08. Um, compounded monthly. So the fact that it's compounded monthly means a whole new formula. Not only that, there's an extra letter in here and that letter is the number of times that it's compounded in a year. Since it's supposedly compounded monthly, that would mean 12 times in a year. So N is going to equal 12 in this instance. And it says, so that 500,000 will be available for retirement in 17 years. Well, A represents the amount that you'll have after a certain time. And the time they gave me in my problem was 10 years. In this problem on the screen, it says 17 years, okay? So I plugged everybody in. I plugged my A value in. I told me to find P, so it stays a P. One plus my rate over my N and then my n times my t. Now, all of this stuff is just numbers. Every single part of this is a number. So I just put that whole thing in the calculator and it spit out 2.21964, so on and so forth, okay? Well, if I have p times this 2.2 number, in order for me to solve for p, I just need to divide both sides by that 2.2 number. So it turns out that when you do it here, they cancel and you get P by itself. But when you do 500,000 divided by 2.2 something or another, it actually comes out to this value. And so we get about two and a quarter or 225,000, about, okay? But that is the end of that one once you find the P value. Now 38 is um, exponential growth and decay. So we are going to be using this formula. Again, it looks a lot like the PERT formula, right? Instead of P, they use the Y sub zero. And instead of A, they just used Y. So we're gonna fill in the information that they gave us. They say that um, the half-life is 1599. So that means that, um, and it tells me my initial quantity is 15. For mine, the initial quantity was 14, okay? So I plugged in the initial quantity, that's what y sub zero represents. So that's the initial. And it says in the half-life, it takes uh, 1599 years. So this would be half of what you started with. So half of 14 is seven. And then notice that for time, the exponent is r times 1599 for t. Now this is an exponential equation, so I did divide both sides by 14 to get rid of that 14. So you end up with 0.5 equal to e with this exponent. We change it into our log form. So it's log base e of this equal to the exponent. Then 
log base E can be written like ln of 0.5 equal to 1599R, then divide both sides by 1599, and you get that R equals this negative decimal here, okay? Um, now, in order for me to find the amount after a thousand years, I essentially have to go back to the original, but now I not only know what this value is, I also now know what the rate is. So I plugged in both of those, 14 and the R, and since it's asking me to figure out what's going on when the time is a thousand years, the time is what's going to become a thousand years. And all of this, I can enter my calculator and it does pop out 9.08. Okay, two more problems. So 39, we have this one here and it gives me the half-life and then it gives me the amount after 10 years. Okay, so half-life means, even though I don't know how much my initial quantity is, I know that in half-life, it means after this many number of years, I should have half of what I started with, okay? And if I take this expression and I divide both sides by y not, these are gonna cancel and these are gonna cancel, leaving me with just one half or 0.5 equal to e to this exponent. Then if I do change it to log form, right? That would mean log base e of the 0.5 equal to the exponent 5715r. Log base e is the same thing as saying ln, and then if I want to solve for r, I'm going to divide both sides by 5715. And so if I type this in my calculator, it does give me negative 0 0.00012283 and so on and so forth, okay? Um, so, but that's not what they asked me for. They didn't ask me for the initial rate. So that does not help. However, if I take the second box, I know that the amount after some time would be three. I don't know what the initial quantity is. I do know what the rate is. It's the same behavior. So it's gonna have the same rate. So that rate went in there. And then times time, I know that time is a thousand years in this situation. Okay, so I plugged in all of this numerical stuff in my calculator and got this decimal. Then I divided both sides by that decimal to cancel it out. Three over this decimal that we're referring to does come out to be 3.39. And so we finally did find our initial quantity, which was 3.39. Again, not going to be the same as every single problem you get just because they are algorithmically generated in this assignment. Okay, so this one says the population P in thousands in a certain city from 2000 to 2014 can be modeled by this model. And it happens to be pretty close. Mine says 160.5, whereas this one says 160.6. Um, where T rep or where T represents the year, T equal to zero corresponds to 2000. In 2019, the population of the city was about 163,075. And it says, find the value of K first. So in this instance, if I find the value of K, I'm gonna plug in um, the population, the P is population, and that number should become this. So notice that it did become my number. My formula stayed the same, but I knew that that was gonna happen in 2009. So then that nine would have been my exponent that went up here. Now I was given two different numbers and I was also given 2006. So notice that my exponent has a six. Um, then to solve for this K, we have to get the log by the exponential by itself. So we divided both sides by 160.5. I ended up with 1.0285, so on and so forth. Here, that would just cancel, right? And I ended up with just e to the six times k. Then I switched the form over. So log base e of this argument equal to that exponent. And then I divided both, by, both sides by six. I ended up with this log decimal, which did round to 0 0.0047. And this is the correct answer. Um, now, what is the second part saying? 
The second part says, use the model to predict the populations of the city in thousands in years 2020 and 2025. Um, so in 2020, that means that T would have equaled 20. And in 2025, T would have equaled 25, okay? So you would have had the formula P equals 160.5 E to the R times 20 or E to the R times um, 25. So you get those two values and those are just the two values that they want in the boxes. Now it says, are the results reasonable? Explain. And then you would say either the populations are reasonable if it continues to increase at the same rate from the year 2020 to 2025. Um, the populations are not reasonable. The population cannot continue to increase at the same rate it did from the year 2020 to 2025. Um, it doesn't seem like it's increasing too erratically. It seems like in 2006, where's my paper? You're starting off with 160.5 thousand people. And between 2020 or 20, 2000 and 2006, it only went up like 5,000 people, okay? Then in 2020, which is 20 years later, it only went up 15,000 people. And then in 2025, a total of 20,000 people. So it's not that big of a difference, which means that the population isn't like rapidly and unreasonably high, okay? So it is a pretty reasonable uh, conclusion to make. Again, I can't click the button. Now, last problem says continue, according to the model, during what year will the population reach 280,000? So in that case, we're going to take um, the 280,000 and equal it to, oh, I had to put it in, because remember our Y, this guy, this P is in thousands. So if this is 200,000, I need to put it into thousands. So I divided by a thousand and that gives me 200,000, okay? So that's the P value that I'm gonna use. So notice that I use the P. So that's 200 thousands. Then I gotta get the exponential guy by himself. So I divided both sides by 160.5. I got this value, changed it to the log form. So it was log base E of this number equal to the exponent. Then log base E is just LN of that decimal equal to 0 0.0047T. Then I divided both sides by 0.0047t, and I got t is about, I typed in all of that in the calculator and got 46.81. And so since it's 46.81, it's not quite in the next year yet. So it's just 2000 plus 46, which is where we got the year 2046. But that does conclude the review. So hopefully you can see some of these solutions and um, understand what's going on while you're working on your review and get everything together in hindsight before um, you start to attempting the test. But good luck, everybody.